Hello, everyone. Hi! It's Lou, and it's Maggie, and it's the Tiltify team here talking about mental health, <laughs> mental health uh, action day. Um, it's a very exciting uh, conversation that we that we get to have today, and it's first of many uh, this this month. Um, just real quick, you can see we got good sound. Everybody can hear me okay? In the, yeah. in the chat, if, if you can't, <laughs> it looks good. It looks good to me, so hopefully we can... We can do that. Yes. Hey, wonderful. Um, but we're having conversations this month, as most people know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. But there's something special going on this month. And uh, one of the, the great minds behind it is uh, none other than Max Zorik, um, Senior uh, Director of Social Impact at MTV Entertainment Group. And so he's honoring us today to have a chat about you know, what the heck is social impact? Where did this, you know, this emerging uh, industry come from? This emergency title, you know, that's not a title that I saw 10 years ago when I, whenever I started my career. But what, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about, um, you know, Mental Health uh, Action Day and how people can get involved. Um, but let's just dive on in. Max, thank you so much. Thanks for, for having me. This for, is awesome. for hanging out. This is, this is so cool. Um, so social impact was is something that you've been doing for for a decade but i would imagine a decade ago that the concept of social impact in conjunction to it being something that you would uh you know you would oversee at an organization like mtv was relatively new you know what is the journey how did you get into this idea of social impact yeah, I, I think you're exactly right on that. I think maybe sometime like 2014, 2015 is the first time that I had heard that term. And I think it's something that filled a bit of a gap where people, you know, it 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 struck a chord where there was this, this kind of nexus of social issue work that was being done by collaborations between companies and nonprofits and companies were leading this work in new ways. And it just didn't quite, there was no word out there or like set of words that really described it really, really well. And I think it's succinctly kind of hit that nail on the head that it's like at the end of the day, it's about impact on, on social issues. And, you know, companies for a long time were doing and still have a social, uh, a corporate social responsibility or CSR departments. Um, but I think those, those tend to move more focused like on volunteerism and, and donations right. and, and, and things of that nature. But social impact, I think went, when companies started doing it, it was a little bit more beyond like how do we use the, how do we unleash the business model how do we find interesting partnerships how do we how do we work across issues and find interesting intersection points and um so yeah i think i think that's that's something that um it's definitely a new term and then on the mtv side uh actually the, our, our our department used to be called public affairs because there wasn't really a term our our, our our department was founded in the late 90s uh, and that, that term you know is kind of a mix of like uh, government relations and public affairs and and you know public relations it, it was it was it was the best term at the time um but we you know we mtv has been doing these types of campaigns and partnerships for more than two decades and the the term like better described the work than anything we had when the department was founded um so yeah and uh yeah what we do is we, we work on uh, uh campaigns we work on content uh, and we work on convening people on the issues that our audience cares about at MTV uh, and in the MTV Entertainment Group, which includes Comedy Central, VH1, uh, CMT, and, and other brands. And we do that on uh, racial justice, mental health, uh, and civic engagement. So that's where uh, what our, our audience is fired up about and what we um, kind of help them take action on. That's that's amazing. Now, so, th so you kind of like narrowed in on it, but why is it important for for organizations like you've gathered like like over 700 organizations and companies and, and governments to to be a part of this mental health action day now why is why is it important for for the shift from social impact from uh like a, a 
uh, like a public affairs kind of concept. Yeah, I think um, for us, the reason why we do a lot of convening at, at MTV and why we've done this a lot last couple of years um, in particular is because um, we've been doing this work a long time. Like there were, of course, you know, I wasn't on the team in the, in the late 90s, but there was a team who is who is doing this work and it, it caught the attention of people and people remember growing up with MTV and whether it's choose or lose or rock the vote or fight for your rights, there was a legacy there of social impact campaigns that people, uh, MTV, you know, this is like not commending myself, but commending people who came for me. It was like, they were, they kind of set a new way forward on, on what this work can look like when it's done really well. Um, and so I think there's that history here. And I, I'm kind of like, I see that history and I know it makes me want to do my work better. And people, when we talk about uh, election work or mental health work, a lot of people just reach out to us, companies, nonprofits, because they know we've been at it for a long time. And we've been doing a lot more kind of convening. We did a big project around the election called Vote Early Day. Um, we're working on Mental Health Action Day. Um, we're not only gonna be doing days, but the, for, these, for these kind of moments, sometimes it's helpful to have a large group of people, cross sector, government, elected officials, talent, cultural leaders, um, coming together to, like, to make a statement or, and to educate people or move them to action. And I think we at MTV are kind of positioned to do that because people know we've just been at it a long time. We know these issues. We know we know um, we know we care a lot about getting the message right, and we know about the audience. Um, and so that's what we kind of we kind of stumbled upon a lot of this convening work and and bringing people together. And then I think beyond that, to, to your point, or like why and how, is it is it does, you can't just convene someone around anything. It's gotta be something people are fired up about. And we weren't hundred percent sure with mental tax day. We had a sense, we knew some companies were talking about this, we had some conversations, but it's just, it's been organic growth, but word of mouth and, and the press is like, you're like, yeah, I wanna be part of that. Like that does need to happen. So um, it's not just about MTV. It's really about the idea that, that brings those, those organizations along. That's interesting that you say that because we recently uh, surveyed our, you know, the, the, the people who use Tiltify, the Tiltify community, and over sixty-four percent of them said that number one, mental health, um, you know, awareness, action. This is what they care about. So, the fact that you're doing um, that, you're doing this initiative, uh, it resonates with you know the you know I think that the folks uh, you know the you know the community, the demographic, or what have you, they they do care about what, what you're doing here. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah it's been um, so. This is an issue that MTV has worked on for 15 or, or 20 years. And again, I, I wasn't doing all that work, but credit to, to many of my colleagues who've been doing it longer or people who are here before me uh, in, in this role. But it's um, I've been working on a little bit over the last couple of years and most since in, in the last kind of six months or so. And it's incredible to watch how people get so passionate and, and like, enthusiastic about working on this issue. Cause I think, and this is a moment particularly during the pandemic where everyone's just been feeling this, right? Like we all uh, in, in ways, either we already have conditions or, and they've been exacerbated or we maybe for the first time we like, you know, felt depressed or felt really um, kind of like generalized anxiety. And, and I think everyone can kind of connect to this issue uniquely in this time. And everyone knows that um, while it's not like the political issue that's getting discussed in the press every day and not something that um, elected officials are talking about every day, I think there's just like this general groundswell around this issue that people are talking about it in the workplace. They're talking about what their companies are doing. They're talking about like how their family can be more supportive. They're trying to figure out like, how do I get access to um, the, the help I need through a headspace or a, through a therapist or like, it's just like, I think people are just they're, they're running up against those things or, and they're thinking about it. And so that's why I think this year in particular, this moment, it was, it was, it, we, we, we've only been working at it like a couple of weeks really. Uh, <laughs> and it's got built so much enthusiasm just because, yeah, it's your point. It's just, it's in your, your community as well. So when we, when we reached out to, to, to you all and, and, and talked about it, it was like, oh yeah, there, our community is fired up about this. And that, that's what I've heard across the board from not just the gaming community, but like every different, kind of organization that 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 might have a have a, a hand in this no absolutely so um how would you explain what mental health action day is 
Yeah. So Mental Health Action Day is Thursday, May 20th. Uh, that's next Thursday. Ooh, and so it's close. a day, uh, <laughs> the goal of that day is to shift people from awareness to action on their mental health um, and to shift the culture from awareness to action on mental health. And our hope is that everybody can take a first step or a next step for their mental health. Um, so maybe, you know, someone that hasn't been uh, done anything for their mental health, you know, maybe they, uh, this is a moment where they can kind of like leave everything behind and they've been, they've been thinking about it. And this is the moment where, yeah, maybe they're going to uh, sign up for, you know, an app like Talkspace to get some access to therapy, or maybe they're going to research what their options are with their, their insurance, or maybe they're just going to reach out to a friend and say, you know, I've been struggling with this, with this thing. And I, I would love your help with working through it. Or I, I, I wasn't, I was afraid to tell anyone. And th this is a moment of like collective action, right? If you're, mm -hmm. your friend's reaching out to you, you're reaching out to another friend and we're all, uh, we're all getting help together. And that, that's really what, what we want to do. Um, and there's also something that people can do if you, if you already done a lot for your mental health, um, you can share that story and say, this is what I've done to take step on mental health. And I encourage other people to do it. And here's the next thing I'm going to do. Like I didn't, I've been, you know, maybe someone is being a therapist for 20 years and been in support groups, but maybe they haven't, you know, talked to their family about it. Maybe that's something that they want to, they want to do. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's a moment of, of not, you know, this isn't about um, making people just talk about mental health, but like really doing something for yourself or, or, or someone you love. I think that's super awesome, especially coming off of the, the last year, everyone realizing how important their mental health is. I mean, yeah, you're stuck in your homes and that's like our safe places, but they became a dangerous place at times. <laughs> I mean, some people were yeah. what making pasta and eating bread and alcohol and that was their low point. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing there, Matt. Yes, yes. <laughs> I see what you're doing there. Sure, other of us we restarted our, our <laughs> <laughs> yeah other of us restarted our you know animal crossing village six times um but yeah. i do think that it's it is definitely more of a conversation today versus even like 10 years ago um yeah. like just just openly talking about mental health isn't such a taboo yeah. thing so i think it's perfectly yeah. timed well, and i think it's oh sorry um no, no, go, go ahead. ahead oh i was just gonna say like i, I think too is that particularly during this last year, people have also, yeah, to your point, like have discovered new ways to cope, like mm -hmm. things were hard. And so maybe gaming was their outlet to like clear their mind and, and, um, and engage with pe people from outside, uh, you know, their, 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 their households, like a bit of an escape, or maybe people took up a new, you know, a new hobby. For like myself, I was, I had surfed a little bit before the pandemic, but like, this is, this, it was a great sport for me to really sink my teeth into like it got me yeah. outside I, it was really socially distant I felt safe um and it I think the difference is is that people do a lot of these activities but they don't think about them as things for their mental health and that's yeah. part of what like an action day is about so think about you're taking an action for your mental health whether that's going on a bike ride or doing yoga for the first time or and or maybe going to bed early like sleep can be great for for mental health um, and more like, yeah, more, more just getting into this habit of we, we all, no matter if we're thriving or we're like really struggling, there's like, we all can be doing, doing something for our mental health. Now, are you seeing like some of the, these organizations, these businesses and, uh, and these brands are um, promoting some sort of like deep stigma, deep stigmatization of mental health in the workplace? Is there anybody who's like doing something that's like really, really exciting yeah, we have um, some, I mean, it's really amazing to see all of the uh, partnership activations come together because as I mentioned, we, I think this idea wasn't there until like early March uh, and now we're a month and a half in and like people are, are, are going big for their uh, organizations and, and um, yeah, but really finding creative ways to reach people or, you know, like using the the best of their assets or, or their ways to reach people just like this. Right. Um, and um, I'm really excited. We, we had a uh, employer focused kind of panel and workshop uh, yesterday or sorry, yesterday, last week. And um, we have some great partners who are really focusing on employee activations. One of the groups there was Adobe um, and they, I think they, they 
found a really nice kind of mix of actions that people can take is that one, they have a lot of great benefits for their workforce, but a lot of times those things aren't easy to publicize or people don't know about them or right. they get overlooked, but this day can help build some like marketing around that to say like, oh, today's the day to actually finally log into our free account with blank <laughs> provider and look at, look at your options. Um, so I think it'll, it's helpful for, for workplaces to do that. But then around, uh, they're also building around that opportunities to uh, volunteer uh, with some uh, nonprofits or donate to those nonprofits to support young people um, with mental health issues. Um, and so I think that's a really, yeah, like a, a cool way where not only can you help yourself, but also we know by helping your community, by donating, those are things that actually can make us feel really, you know, positive as well. And they can, they can be good for our mental health. You're, and, and not only that, you're also helping someone in the process. So um, yeah, I thought I, 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 it was cool to learn about that story that, that Adobe was doing. That's fantastic. So at the end of, so it's, so May 20th, you know, at the end of that day, what, what does, you know, how do you feel, what is that metric for success? Like, what is what is it that you're going to then take to the next year and say that was great? Let's build upon it. Yeah, I mean that's that's such a good question because when we talk about social impact, at the end of the day, it's like, what's the impact? Um, right. And for us, I think one of the biggest markers of success has just been um, in what we're tracking is like the breadth of partners. Um, and those kind of cultural leaders involved, because I think that's just, that's an initial kind of marker for us that like, how far and wide is this going? Like, what is, what is the interest in a, in a moment like this? Can we even get um, some, some large companies and nonprofits and community organizations on board? And I think it, the way that this kind of campaign is built, it's like, it's not about MTV, it's about the day and can people can people take that and run with it? Does it does it work? Do they they come up with great activations? Are they doing stuff? And and so far, I mean, we'll see on the twentieth what all that transpires. But it's been, it's just like it's been amazing to see. Like we just saw um, uh, on Eventbrite, uh, who's one of our partners, we just saw pop up like there's a, a walk that someone is doing in Rahway, New Jersey, with their community, and that's what they're going to do on Mental Health Action Day, and they're going to raise some money, I think, and and bring the community together, and like that's that's a great sign to see, right? There's like there's things that are happening. Um, so that's really important to us. I think the other thing that's important to us is this kind of, um, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to shift from awareness to action. Right. And that's a bit of like a narrative point. It's like, can we see, can, can a day like this, do people think about the next mental health awareness month a little bit more actiony? Or do they think about, you know, um, World Mental Health Day in October as a moment when it's not just talking about the issues, but what, are we, what am I doing? Or what are we doing to advance the, the conversation on the issue in terms of access and things of that nature. So um, those are some big things we have in mind. And we have a lot of kind of ways that you can measure them in terms of how many partners are on board, what are they doing, uh, what, um, you know, in terms of conversation, like what does that look like on social that day in terms of social listening and, and what does it look like on Twitter and Instagram and things of that nature. But we want to see like stuff happening online, offline. We want to see a diversity of partners, workplaces, nonprofits, et cetera. So uh, that, that's what success would look like to us. That's amazing. That's super exciting. Now, let's think about like you mentioned, like surfing, right, as being like an outlet for you during uh, during COVID. What you know? What are some of the other things that you found like that gave you like that relaxing? We have our I don't know if you if you see him, but we we have like a little our little meditating mascot who's floating right under right underneath you. If you're if you're not on watching us on Twitch, you'll see him. He's really cute. He's just floating <laughs> there that. That. He's like, too. Here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's totally he's just meditating. He's just he's just taking awesome. that time. What are some other things that you've you know that you've done that have helped you maintain um or at least attempt to maintain a healthy a mental health um uh, you know what was the maintain that yeah. quality of mental health that yeah. you want? Yeah, I think that's so um there's so many different actions you can take uh, when you when you when you get thinking about it, and um, for me, like one thing that I did right when the, <laughs> the pandemic started, actually, is I took a daily walk, and I like, I just posted it on Instagram like I'm taking my daily walk, and that was like that was the thing. I'm really bad at sitting still, and I wasn't someone who's was just gonna like fire up Netflix and like spend the next three months inside, and just like that daily walk, just like 
being kind of grateful to be able to at least be outside, even though we weren't quite sure what everything was going to be like. And um, so that's one thing that I did. I also, um, similarly as, as what time went on, I would love just getting a coffee at my coffee shop in the morning, just like sitting there and just like not trying not to do anything and just like appreciating uh, the, the day. Uh, not, sometimes successful, sometimes not. But <laughs> it's a bit of like, I, I, I used to meditate a little. I'm not, I, that, not as good at that, but that's like my daily meditation is just kind of like sitting there watching the neighbors and just like having that kind of interaction. Um, I'm also someone I've, I've probably gone to therapy for like two years now, a little over two years. And so I, while that's not necessarily accessible to everyone, I'm lucky to have a health insurance and have found, found someone who my health insurance covers. And um, that's been a great outlet to have someone who, who knows me, but doesn't have like a, a, a horse in the race, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like my family or friends who can just be, a, be an outlet. So I found that really helpful. Um, and then, yeah, I think even just finding time, surfing is a great way for me to get away. But also like if I've been able to find like two or three days to like take a drive and go, um, I live in New York. So go like upstate or going to Massachusetts or try to go snowboarding. Like I really find like being outdoors is a great way. Yeah, I'd be curious what, what, you, what, you, what you all do. No, it's being mindful, right? Maggie, what do you do for, uh, oh, gosh. to maintain, maintain your, your mental health? <laughs> So I was actually diagnosed um, bipolar in 2019 and um, I decided to prioritize my mental health in 2020, like before the pandemic started. And I was like, I'm going to do everything I can for me. And a lot of that was actually cutting out things like streaming. I miss streaming, mm. but it was really hard on my mental health, keeping up with the numbers. Um, you know, just I, <laughs> after work, I basically make dinner, work out, take a bath and then watch TV or draw or read <laughs> or write. Um, and that's kind of been like my routine of keeping sane. Um, I worked nice. home like remote my entire, um, like working history. So I like to take sun breaks, connecting with like this, like being outside, sticking my feet in the dirt and just, just standing there is like my meditation time. Yeah. Um, I do want to say that uh, everyone has different <laughs> has different mental health breaks. Maybe standing in the sun uh, isn't isn't your thing, but I am a living sunflower, so it's definitely <laughs> those mine. are all good ones. You know, yeah. one thing I like one thing I learned um, in doing this work is that the term and like this idea of self care has been very um, you know it's made to be kind of like privileged and expensive, and. Yeah. I, I feel that way. When you say the term to me, it's like, oh, I don't do self-care. That sounds like, mm -hmm. that sounds expensive. You know, that sounds like fancy and expensive and something that only for some people, but it's like, right. there's all these things that we do that are to care for ourselves, whether it's like, yeah, take a bath, cook for myself, do this. And they, yeah. can, like, they can be a way to take your mind off of mm -hmm. whatever is going on or um, yeah, it's a, that's awesome. Lou, what do you do to uh, maintain yeah, your mental health? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, like I was, I mean, you know, in a, in a previous life, I traveled a lot, like so many of us did. And so I think that I first had a huge withdrawal of that kind of that, uh, you know, that's just that excitement. And uh, I had to slow down and I had to not replace that energy with something else. And so I did, I suffered from anxiety and I did, you know, I did have, I did talk to somebody and again, like, right, that's a, that's a privilege to be able to to, you know, to be able to afford that time. Um, but I also was open about it with, with friends and, and family. And I, I did, you know, I, I was vulnerable with, with that. And what it came down to was just being so mindful. Like, you know, we're all stuck in the house together this last year, like on top of each other. And, you know, we have, my son works from home and my wife works from home and taking the time to, to be with them when we're together really made me go ah wait i have to be mindful about i have to be present when i'm here and not when we have that time and to put down the phone because i'm on front of a computer the whole day i put down yeah. the phone Same. have dinner no tv we're not watching the next episode of glee or whatever <laughs> we're we're going to we're going to just talk and we're going to we're going to laugh and, and enjoy each other and so that was that but it was also you know when we could yeah we you know, we, we live in a beautiful state of Colorado, so we do get to enjoy, you know, the outdoors and just breathe and like 
take my dog on a walk. And my, my wife, if she's watching this, she's going to laugh. She's like, you never took the dog on the walk. But I would <laughs> I have yeah. probably. Yes, allowed... that's what counts. It's the thought that counts, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's intentionality, right? I think yes. that's what this time is really. So yeah. like you have to be intentional with, with, the, yeah. with the time you have. And not that there's like a one right way to do any activity, but I feel just personally speaking is that there are some activities that in the past could have been good for my health, mental health, but I didn't think of that, them in that way. It's like, this is time to like re recover from the day or just, and I would like, you know, I would go to like the gym or something and I would like spend like my free time on the phone, just like looking at work emails. And it's like, that just like cancels out. The, does. Like, yes, you're like physically helping yourself, but you're not necessarily... Mm -hmm. mental uh you're not like caring for your mental health and like it's all health you know mental health physical myself, health it's like yeah, yeah yeah I find myself not on my phone as often especially coming out of last year like I maybe check it a few times a day but for the most part like I'm not I'm not glued to it like I was pre-pandemic it's just like, oh, okay, it's there, but I'm going to spend time with my cat. I'm going to spend time with my kids. We even have like what we call cuddle breaks because all my kids have been home where we, if anyone needs a hug, you get a, you get a hug until you are done hugging and you feel recharged again. And then you can go back about your business. Aww, that's great. <laughs> because, I love that. Yeah. And then the girl, my daughters are so close in age. They fight constantly. So it's like, do you guys need a hug Aww. break? And they'd be like, Yes. And then they're like, <laughs> happy again. And it's like, okay, this is awesome. Um, I would like to say though, I think it's amazing that MTV is heading this project um, is, is the one who, who created this considering that um, most of the people that remember MTV aren't going to be the generation Z's. They're going to be my generation and up and we're all overworked with a billion jobs, stressed to the max, like, you know, buying stock in wine and IPA companies because <laughs> that's how we cope with things. But and I Bitcoin, apparently. Yes, and <laughs> Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Oh my gosh, Doge. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think it's great because it gives, like, you guys are in the forefront of everyone's minds. As soon as I heard MTV, I was like, oh, sick. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm remember mtv when they still had music videos so for me it was yeah, like me too. this is super cool <laughs> i'm super excited to see the reach to the millennials and to the generate what is it the x the x generation the middle one or whatever the anyways we're x, all over yeah. yeah so it's super great so real quick if folks are are, are watching if you have questions yes. for for zach um uh, regarding social impact or uh, mental health action day go ahead and drop them in the chat we'd love to to answer those questions but also we do have some resources if you click on the panel on our twitch on our on our twitch uh, page then you can take you to a blog that lists all of the the mental health charities that are participating uh in uh, mental health action day so you can click on one of those causes and begin fundraising for them right away. There's no need to wait for uh, for for supporting causes you care about. If you're here and you're watching Tiltify, you probably know that already, but just a little helpful reminder. Um, commands should be mostly working <laughs> in the chat. So um, Nightbot will um, will probably share a, a link um, for you if you if you have further questions. Um, and there's even there's even a a, a phone number you can call right on the mental health action day website. Um, that's also, if you, if you hit, um, a command take action, um, it'll share that, that number. Uh, if you have concerns about, uh, your health or someone else's health, mental health, uh, you can call that and talk to a, a medical professional for free. It's confidential. Um, there's also some other resources on mental health action day.org. Um, Go check that out. Uh, it's 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 a it's a powerful tool. And again, it's a it's to be mindful of being actionable. Um, on May twentieth, I just can't believe it's almost May twentieth. I can't. Believe it. it was just um, Christmas. It was. Just, it was just. Yeah. My son had just said that. He's like, "But we just did Christmas." I'm yep. like, I know. We're yep. almost halfway through. <laughs> Yeah. If I could also share one more uh, site we just worked on called uh, mentalhealthishealth.us. Um, we oh, just cool. built that with an, with some like leading experts in uh, emotional well-being, and it's just a really um, I've, I've, I my colleagues worked on it, and I, I just I, I think it's a great uh, tool for like learning what you can do for a friend or what what you can do for for yourself. And just a great resources there too. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So what's um, 
so what are you doing next? What is there any any cool events that you're going to be appearing or you're excited to see um, between now and the 20th? Uh, anything on the 20th that you're like, I can't believe we got X brand to do this. Like what? Do you, I mean, and you can't play favorites, <laughs> but but really, what's the one that that made you excited? Well, I, I'm really excited. Um, in the lead up to Mental Health Action Day, uh, we're working with a group called Task Force and Into Action. Uh, they produce a lot of creative content with artists and we've been working with them very closely on Mental Health Action Day. Uh, they're amazing. And they're hosting one of their creative jams on, um, uh, I believe it's the 19th. Uh, if you go to uh, creativejam.art, um, you'll see this. And it is, uh, we're just bringing together creatives from all around the world. Uh, we do, they're gonna do a brief on like what the art can, uh, can say or what it could look like. Uh, and then we have DJs, we're going to get everyone hyped for a mental health action day. But yeah, it's just a great experience to kind of bring people together, bring some artists together, create some amazing content that can then go out on mental health action day. Uh, we'll have some surprise guests. Uh, yeah, it'll just be, a, it'll be a really good time just getting people pumped for, for mental health action day. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions right now. But I do have some questions for you myself. What is your the favorite part of your job? What is that one thing that gets you out of bed every morning? That's a great question. Um, I, I think for myself, I think I'm just so lucky to work somewhere where, and sometimes I take this for granted even, but it's like working at the intersection of pop culture and, and media and social impact is a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a gift. Um, there's not too many places or organizations where you can do that. And I, yeah, just as someone who loves consuming media and culture and understanding like what's the next thing and what are people reading, talking about, reading about. Um, and yeah, to be, to be able to like not lose that part of me that cares about that stuff, the part that <laughs> like lives in New York and likes like, wanted to stay here and loves culture and loves the energy of the city, um, but also gets to work on issues that I really care about, like defending democracy and, and mental health and racial justice. And um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a lucky, lucky position to be in and, and one I, I try not to forget. Uh, so since we are talking about the tail end of, you know, the, the pandemic, you know, fingers crossed that things, things can start to open up. What is, uh, and this is totally, this is, t this is not a, a, a question of substance. This is like, what is the, what is that your favorite joint that we're going to go and get that, that your favorite food? What is going to be that yummy dish that you've missed out on that you've been a little too maybe reticent to, to go and get? Oh man. Hopefully they're still open. I think that's, a thing I, know, that, I know that's been there breaking my so heart. Many, um, yeah. yeah, that there's, I mean, there are so many places where I feel like, oh man, I just have missed out of last year. And I think um, it's been amazing to see everything evolve in New York to like so many places do outdoor dining, uh, which is really, really cool. So I have been able to go to to places here, here and there. Um, but one place that doesn't, I haven't been, <laughs> I, uh, New Yorkers have taken this whole thing pretty seriously. I travel across the country and I like know different communities, like have had different kind of risk tolerance, but New York, I haven't eaten indoors in the last, since like, March, whatever, seven yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I've been really careful. And uh, there's an Italian place over here. Um, so uh, that is called Misi. And uh, it's, uh, it's just like the best pasta ever. Um, and it's just like a beautiful place. I like, like, very like modern looking. And yeah, it's just my, my kind of like, my vibe. And uh, like, you just order like a bunch of pasta, share with your friends, get some gelato, get some wine. And it's just oh. like, it's a good time. So oh, I can't wait. I've been much looking forward to, to going to that spot in, in uh, New York. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, pasta sounds so good. What about you guys? <laughs> what yeah, is, uh, what's, what... what's the cuisine that you can't make yourself? Because let's be honest, like, <sighs> there's two things that I don't want to do. Like, I loved going out. Like, that was a thing my family loved to do because you don't mm -hmm. have to throw away anything and you don't have to cook. And so, yeah. so much ordering in, I'm like, I just don't want to deal with anything. Just, I just want to sit down and eat and just mm -hmm. have yeah. a conversation. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'm not so sure, to be honest. Um, I make a lot of food. <laughs> like, if I get hungry yeah. for something, I like, I go and I get the ingredients and I make it. Um, one of my favorite uh, speakeasies did close down though in the pandemic, so that was unfortunate. Um, it was like a vampire themed bar. <laughs> It was pretty awesome. You went in through the fridge and like you went upstairs. Oh, wow. Honor it's Amongst like, Thieves. It's got like yeah. a Meow Wolf vibe going on there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was called Honor Amongst Thieves and they had one of the most amazing whiskey bars I had ever seen. Um, That's awesome. It was just, it was really awesome, but they, they shut down. So maybe I will venture out and go find a new speakeasy. That's cool. That would be nice. That is one thing I, other than food, like just like the, the smell of like just a bar and just you know that like that feeling of you just like sitting at a bar top and yeah. you don't know how long you're going to be there and you're with a good friend and i have really missed that too yeah yeah being yeah. socializing and being with people like in a in a public place is it, it i undervalued it i definitely did yes. and, and yeah and even like maybe meeting new people like whether it's the person sitting next to you or the you know where the yeah you know, the waiter or the bartender conversations yeah, we had yeah, an I Irish think... bar we went to a lot that we did that. They were, it was a Seattle Seahawks bar, but they were called the Skeptical Chemist. So they're still open, thank goodness. But we would do that like every other week. We'd just go down there and have bangers mash and lots and lots of Guinness. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see the, the different kinds of community and relationships mm -hmm. we build. Um, and I think that things like Mental Health Action Day is another one of those, those touch points where you... You don't have to be, you know, you don't, you don't have to hold in this conversation. You can talk about it because the last year has been garbage for most mm -hmm. people. And mm -hmm. so it's an easy, it's an easy gateway for people to connect and to, and to just be with each other and to commiserate and to celebrate the fact that, you know, you're able to have that conversation uh, in the yeah. first place. So that's, that's amazing. Um, I'm just checking to say, I don't see, I don't see any, any questions, but um this has been fantastic. Um, uh, I do want to end it like uh, with a couple more like questions from like inside the actor studio. Just a couple couple of questions, and you just got to give me just one answer. All right, mm -hmm. what all right. is what is your favorite word? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know why it comes to mind, but superfluous. I always superfluous. I don't know. I just always thought it was a wacky word. Okay, what I, is your what is your <laughs> least favorite word? Um, probably like I'm a persistent person so maybe I say like no <laughs> <laughs> I'm always Art? like uh, yeah I just I don't know I think there's always a there's always there's always ways to find ways to work together and I don't yeah I don't know why I, like I said it. that but that's I like it. Um, mine. just a couple we'll do, do one more set of, set of questions and so what is your favorite sound Um, waves crashing. That makes sense. That makes sense. What is your least favorite sound? Oh, I hate Velcro. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that's like my hooks. Oh. oh gosh, like you know, just like you know, like Velcro shoes or like something or like a bag that might have it. And like yeah. for some reason, that's just like the thing that makes my mind like, great. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. <laughs> Well, this is uh, this has been absolutely absolutely wonderful, Max. I am so excited that uh, that Tiltify is able to participate and in in part bring our community into this day of action, as long as and as well as all, you know our charity partners who I know are excited to see the support that um, mental health uh, deserves. And so, uh, again, we look forward to. May twentieth, we'll keep sharing these conversations. Um, we have another conversation later this week with um, the uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, then the next week, we'll talk to um, Safe in Our World in the UK. We'll talk to uh, uh, to write Love on Our Arms uh, later next week. So lots of good conversations, uh, folks. If you're watching, we have a schedule. Um, keep uh, keep an eye out on that to come back and we'll be talking to content creators sharing their stories um and uh, maybe some of their best practices through mental health their maybe some of their journeys uh as well as representatives from those uh, from those charities to, to continue this conversation about being actionable um with your mental health 
um, and supporting others to, to do the same. Um, I, Maggie, do you have any final thoughts? Anything you want to say to, to, to folks? Uh, just keep updated on our social. If you guys have any questions, feel free to always, you know, add us or DM us, um, or email us. But yeah, that's it. Amazing, Max. Have a wonderful day. Um, can't can't wait to can't wait to see uh see Mental Health Action Day again next year with yes. all the success you have with it this year. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. We're nine days out. So nine days out. We're almost there. Mark your calendars. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks, much. Everyone. Have a good day. Of course. Have a good one. Bye. Is it time? Uh, <laughs>